Chapter 1. Starting Out. Be the best bride ever. The big day has arrived, and your nerves are standing at attention. What were you thinking? Do you know this man you are about to marry? Whether this is the first time or the third, I believe there are some moments of doubt. It is important that you remember why you are here, and what this day really means. It isn't the dress, the cake, or even where you will head for your honeymoon. It is the relationship you are about to commit to. I honestly believe I could have been married in a sack and still had the biggest, dumbest grin on my face when I walked down the aisle. I was truly marrying my best friend. With that said, there are several things you should prepare yourself for on this day. Most important, be real. Give this man the real you from day one. If you prefer a church wedding, visit with the pastor several times before the wedding. In many churches today, some form of marriage counseling is required prior to the wedding. Even if it is not, set some time aside and make an appointment with your pastor to sit and talk with them. They are more than capable of setting aside your fears and assisting you in remembering why you are heading down the aisle. Accept everything and everyone as graciously as possible. This is not the time to become a crab. If your husband steps on your dress, don't turn into Wanda the Witch. If you drop an earring or he accidentally brushes a curl out of place on your head, relax. He doesn't mean to. In fact, unless he attends formal banquets or dances every other day in which he is wearing a tuxedo, he probably doesn't know exactly what to do or how to act around you. Give him a break. This is a side of you he does not need to see. The worst thing you can do is embarrass your new husband. He will not forget it. If your wedding is a large affair, be prepared to be on your feet for most of the time. Have an extra pair of low heels nearby, or even some slippers. This will definitely help your mood. It isn't your new husband's fault that your feet hurt. If you haven't eaten, you will get a little lightheaded from all of the commotion and excitement. Make sure you keep some water nearby and something to nibble on. If he seems to be having a better time than you, or one of his friends or best men makes an inappropriate joke, roll with it. This too shall pass. Guys will catch on really quick when they have made the bride upset. This is the time that your husband should stand up for you and let his friends know they need to cool it. A good guy will do these things for you. If he doesn't, it is probably because he has never had to put them in their place. The wedding is not the place to get into it, though. The honeymoon is not the place either, unless he is getting phone calls or texts from his buddies and can't seem to let them go. The best way to handle this is to leave your phones in the hotel room and go for a long walk. Talk about things and how you feel. If all is good, wait until you get home and the time is right to really discuss those old friendships. Give yourself some time to think about how you plan to handle your own girlfriends as well. The new rules of friendship etiquette will also apply to you. Speaking of eating, make sure you do eat something besides cake. Many brides have starved themselves to fit into their dresses, and fainting at weddings has been known to happen. Everyone needs to eat. If you are a healthy eater, don't start your marriage off trying to fool your husband. Before you know it, you have your head in the refrigerator at 2 a.m. in the morning trying to sneak a peanut butter sandwich or that leftover piece of cheesecake you pretended not to want at dinner. Make a special cake for your new husband and his groomsmen. Bakers usually refer to this cake as the groom's cake. Have this be a surprise for your man. I would suggest a replica of his favorite sports team or hobby, such as fishing or hunting. Include a little note, letting him know how much you love him. I have seen some very interesting cakes, and they can be so much fun. You can have it planned so that the groomsmen and your husband meet in a designated place to drink a toast to one another and share the cake amongst themselves. If he has a sister that seems to be reluctant to embrace you as a new member of the family, try very hard to help her understand how much you love her brother. They may have a very close relationship, and it will be to your advantage to have her as an ally. Give her a chance. You may be totally misreading her animosity. I married into a family that has three sisters. We don't always see eye to eye, but I have loved them the best way I can, because they are a part of my husband. You don't have to let anyone push you around, though, so be sure your husband lets them know in no uncertain terms that you come first. Just as you embrace the sister, you must embrace the mother. 
Of course, there are many family circumstances, and each one must be carefully nurtured. Some examples could be, his mother passed away, or there is a stepmother or biological mother situation, or grandmother has raised him and might be wearing the mother's shoes on this blessed day. Take a deep breath and remember these ladies in some small way. After all, his mother is giving one of her most precious gifts to you and wants to trust you to take care of him and be a good wife. Make sure you have some small appreciation gift for the pastor or individual that marries you. They have gone out of their way to perform a special ceremony for you. Even if it is your family minister that watched you grow up in pigtails with knobby knees, don't take advantage of this person's generosity. My husband and I were very fortunate to have my great uncle, who is also a family pastor, to marry us. It was very special. Celebrate with your new husband. Remember, this is his day too. It is okay to let your hair down a little. You don't have to be perfect. 